All right. So we are making our new first new project. So in the project, we can create a new project, find the position on desktop and change the project name to something uh, good, Steam Odyssey and create project. After a while, you will see a folder created on the desktop and this is the project. You can move these projects around. Yeah, and Sayeri and uh, Yash, maybe this has been already covered in the design lab. Yeah, but very soon we are going to more focus on the fabrication aspect. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, is there any trouble to transfer the project from PC to Mac? Is that okay? Um. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm pretty positive. Yes. Yeah, but I, I haven't tested it. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have a Mac, but I'm very positive. Uh, I'm going to also explain you how to export as a package so you can import it to a new project so you ca it can work as a teamwork. A uh, very good question. I am very positive on transferring the projects. Okay. Um, cool. So this is the uh, Unity window. Um, this is hierarchy inspector and console. So first thing, please check if you don't have any red message here. So check in the console. If there is nothing, it means this is great. No error. But it's possible that, like for me, I had some errors just by opening it, like uh, when I installed 2020, somehow there were like some errors. So I decided not to use 2020. But if you find any error, try different version. Yeah. But I don't have any error. I hope nobody has any error. Yeah. So that's console. And in this Unity, this is scene view, this is game view. You can create a lot of scene uh, of objects here. So you can right click to create an object or yeah. So let's create an object, for example. Let's create a cube, yeah. So it creates the cube in zero, zero, zero position. And you can actually see that cube here. So this game view uh, is Sumi. Hi. Sorry, I I don't have a camera to spray. Stay out. Where did you get it? Oh, this preview. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh. I mean the game view. Right. Yeah. Game view. Do you have the game view here? Maybe. Maybe sometimes it's here. Um. No. Or no. you go to window. Yeah. and open the game view. Oh, OK, thank you. OK, good question. And I like to bring this game view here so I can see both in the same time. Um, but it's up to you. All right. Thank you. No problem. And in the game view, it's displaying what you are seeing in this camera. So if you have, are you in the future, you might have few cameras in your scene. You can see that in the camera inspector, it's applied to the display one, you see? So in case you make another camera, make sure you apply to the display and the display is here. Yeah, but I, uh, it's, it's not, I'm not gonna cover that yet. Yeah, it's, so this is the object. 
you can move this around. Uh, you have to use Alt and mouse button to shift, rotate, zoom. So just play with this, with your left, middle, right mouse button with Alt. Pressing Alt, you can navigate, yeah. And you can go to your, so I'm gonna make Control D and drag. You can copy few things, for example. You see how they are expanding here. And you can use, maybe create more geometries by moving things around, right? Control D to copy. And this is the object like everything in the scene will be listed here, all right? And you can also, um, yeah, you can also group them. If there are too many, you can group them. Uh, you can make something under is, that is a child or something. For example, if I child this one to this guy, so this guy is cube three, and this guy is a sphere. If I drag this under it, it childs this. So if I now move this, they move together. Yeah. But if I move the child, it doesn't move the parent. So that's the relationship is between different objects. Yeah. So for example, now I can, for example, I can group these guys, cubes, together, I can just child this three under this guy, sorry, under this guy, and just move this, so just move this. But that's a, not a very clean uh, parenting. So you can right click, create a empty object. This is completely empty. And you can use a reset button to uh, make a, it's just a, a a object with nothing, yeah? You just have an origin point. And I can say group of cubes, so cubes S. And I can child all of these cubes under, for example. And now I can move this, move the cubes. All right. And I can do that also for my sphere. Spheres. You can child them like this. Okay. And let me uh, bring something. From as a OBJ or FBX. So very likely you, uh, Unity is not a modeling software. You have to bring a model from outside, all right? So I have uh, a lot of like model. I have made a house model. I'm gonna put it here. So you remember if you export from Rhino, it gives you this MTL file as well, right? So that's a material file. So what this look like? is let's see if it gives us the 3d view yeah so this uh, looks weird here but this actually is a house model with colors yeah so uh, if you want to import a geometry uh, this is the assets folder i'm going to make a it's, it's a good habit to organize your folders really neatly. Right click, create a folder. I'm gonna say models, yeah? And then I'm going to drag these two guys here. So this folder corresponds to this folder. So if you double click this folder and you will see a assets folder, and everything that I create under assets, it appears here. So that's the same category or same address. 
All right. So now I have dragged these two. You have to drag both together because if you only drag OBJ, the material doesn't come in. All right. So once you drag in, now it's okay if you click on this thing. You can drag this and put it in your scene. And Unity, one unit in Unity is one meter. So in our class, we are not going to use Imperial mod, uh, units. <laughs> we are going to use uh, meter or millimeter, yeah? So uh, also in Fologram, because we have to execute or uh, display AR models in real scale, so modeling anything in real scale is really important, okay? This guy uh, is like a four meter by four meter high thing. And uh, I just dragged it. I can right click and reset the position. That's how I modeled in Rhino. I already modeled it uh, snapping, centering to zero, zero position. Yeah, in this manner, okay. So that's how you can drag an object uh, to a scene. Let me just move this to the side. Okay. And to, uh, so this color looks a little bit weird. Yeah. We always have to just generate the light setting one time. So you go to Windows and render, check this light setting, lighting settings. So I have uh, hooked up the window there, but you, you, it might be somewhere like outside like this for you. Um, so I like to put it here, but you don't have to, you can just close it. Yeah, so after you have this, uh, just say generate lighting and everything became bright. So that's just the first step just to make it uh, better and you have a default uh, directional light you can change the direction to change the sunlight the position of this directional light doesn't matter it can be anywhere like it doesn't matter you can change the direction however you want okay and this camera is Actually, this is what you will see after you build a app, yeah? So the camera position is more important. So you can move the camera, move it further, move it around and so on. Uh, but it's a lot of work just moving it and rotating it, right? So easiest way to do it is you navigate to a good position Let's say, oh, I really like this view. And you can click your camera and go to game object, align with view. Then this will snap to the view of the scene. So click on this or control shift F. So click on select the main camera, control shift F. Now you see that the game view is now snapped to my scene view. Now I can just uh, rotate anywhere that I need for building this app. Uh, but you have this thing here, all right? And, and okay, so if this were a PC app, so the PC screen or for any animation, please stick to 16 to nine ratio, 16 to nine ratio. For mobile, uh, mobile app, we recommend you to uh, shoot any video in a landscape format, okay? Even if the mobile is, you, you feel more comfortable with like straightening up, right? But do it in a landscape manner, yeah. So, uh, but normally mobile looks like that, yeah. But in the future, please stick to a landscape format. 
So for now, I'm gonna stick to 16 by nine for all of our uh, future application design, UI design. And uh, let's test some real quick uh, UIs, yeah? So for, for, uh, for normal a, uh, application UI, it's a UI stick to the screen. So there's no uh, UI that are floating somewhere else that for that, we have to use another plugin. Okay, so if you right click here, or if you go to game object, same, you can create a canvas, for example, and something appears here in a, in a weird position. So that doesn't, do anything with your model. It doesn't interfere with any model. This represents your screen. So if you see, if I change the uh, screen to this, this also changes, see? So this is corresponding to your scene uh, screen. So yeah, which is a bit weird. It looks a bit weird, but that represents your screen. And you can click on the canvas and right click and create a UI. For example, I can create a button. Yeah, the button got created here. You can, you can change the position. You can use a really nice image to change the button image as well. So if you are interested in doing that, you can, make a PNG file. So I have some list of PNG files. Um, for example, yeah, I'm gonna use anything, any of this. So if I have this thing, for example, or home button, for example, I can drag this PNG file to my SS folder I'm going to make a new folder called images. I'm making this folder because I know that this project will become bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, so you don't mess up in the future. It's a good habit to have a really clean project folders. Also good for sharing. Okay. So uh, the property of this, um, so let me show you what happens if I just drag this image to this, I think it's not gonna come. So you can, you, you wanna use another image for the button design, it doesn't work. It's because the property doesn't allow. So you have to change the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI. So once you click that and apply, this changes immediately uh, to transparent one. You see here, now you go to the button and drag this here. You see that that actually replaced, yeah? <clears throat> so now you can just change the size. Uh, maybe you can even, Make it bigger. And always you need to snap to the correct position. <clears throat> uh, this one should snap to the bottom, yeah? The reason why we do that is because if you change the ratio, so sometimes you change your phone, you change your device, it always snaps to different things. So if this were to uh, position to the right, so if once you change the ratio, it disappears because it, it's snapping to the wrong corner. Does it make sense? So this one should have snapped to the bottom. So that's really important. Okay. 
And I think what's safe is actually we use 1920-1080. That's the video that we are going to produce at the end. So when you design a UI, uh, it's better you stick to this ratio. Um, or it also, uh, depending on your device resolution, we'll see. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so you see that there is a text as a child of this, right? So you can either delete it or you can also move it. And you can change the color. And you can say home. Okay, and this was this is not accommodating, so you need to make it longer. So make Why? Okay, the font needs to be smaller. Okay, but you see that the font is a bit weird. It's not great. Uh, so in order to improve that, there is something called Text Mesh Pro. This is defaultly installed. If you don't have that, you can go to your package manager and find Text Mesh Pro. Click on it and install it. I already have it installed, so I don't have to do that. So this package manager is where you can find all the available plugins that are official. And if you need more, some custom uh, assets, custom package, you can visit asset store. So for 2020, uh, it doesn't have it here. It's gonna allow, give you a link. So you can search this in the browser. And you can just link, log in to your uh, ID and install the assets. Then it's going to be coming here. So exploring like asset store is also really interesting. Yeah, so please do that. All right, so let's compare the buttons. So right click UI, uh, text mesh pro button. Say import essentials. You don't need these examples. So close it. And this one, I'm going to do exactly the same thing to this button. I'm gonna put it next to it. Um, and I'm going to use, it's, the process is exactly the same. I'm gonna use it here. I'm going to change this uh, size. But you already can see the text is much better, isn't it? So you have this button, you can scale the font size and move it down. Made it a slightly bigger text and changing the color. That's it. And changing the name to home. Let's compare. It's so much better. Yeah, so it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's just having a better text output. Okay. Cool. So what do we want to do with this button? So uh, for example, now it's just a home button. These two buttons are exactly the same, but you can add some event, yeah? To allow it to do something. 
So you see that the button, don't worry too much about these colors, you can explore it, yeah. So you have this button and you can add some comment on the on click. So when I click on it, I want this to do something, all right? So let me play, add a event, and maybe I'm going to add an event to this house. So let's say, because now I don't have too much things, let's say if I click on the thing, I'm going to let my house to do something. So you can, uh, you already connected to the house, all right? And there is no function. There is some only limited things that you can do here. But what properties do I have in the house? So I have a transform. I have this thing, like enabling and disabling button. So I don't have much ability. So maybe I'm going to say when I click, I'm going to make this disappear. So I can go back and for my house, I'm going to connect my game object, set active. And you can set the initial state. So tick meaning true, untick meaning not true. Because this is a button, cannot go back. It's not a toggle button. It's one side, one off button. So now, if I play the game, doesn't do anything, and I have ability to click. See, you, it becomes a bit darker. It's because of this. When it's pressed, it becomes darker. When I click this, I guess this will disappear. This didn't disappear. Sorry. So this was a, when I click, it should disappear, I see. Okay, when I click, it should turn it off. So I'm gonna play. So when I click, it should set the house active as false. Cool. And it doesn't come back, yeah? Because this is not a toggle button. So it only does one thing, all right? Uh, so what if I want to have a toggle? Like if I click and click another time, it turns up back on. In that case, we need to use a toggle UI. So it's called toggle. A toggle UI looks like this. Looks like that. And you can you can see that there's no toggle text mesh pro, isn't it? So for this kind of guys, uh, if you really like the text mesh pro text. You can delete the label and just add a text mesh pro text because it's just a text. It's not really necessary, but if you want. So I say toggle on and off, whatever you want to say. And you can, of course, change color, change it, whatever. Yeah. And there is a check mark. So it actually, if you toggle, it gives you this image, that image. You can also change this image to something else. You can design a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to connect the house to the event of toggling and I'm going to use game object set active. So I'm going to play this. And now if I turn it off, it turns Boolean. 
of n is on this is on okay on value change boolean let me try this again so this is on should be connected to the boolean game object set active okay let me try this again okay now it works okay so what what you had to choose is the game object and the dynamic boolean not a static static parameters so static parameters is like uh, you are giving providing one of uh, value and uh, dynamic boolean meaning because this is toggle it doesn't in button it, you don't have this you can actually connect the is on value to these two guys is set static and set active which is these two buttons so this one and this one for uh, static this you don't have to uh, worry about this now so okay this button they only work when you play the game when you start playing the game okay and you can actually uh, export this as a pc game so in order to export this as a PC game, you can build the setting and you can build, you have to add the current scene. So add the open scene. And there are different options. If you are in Mac and building to uh, iPhone, you use iOS and switch platform. You, the icon needs to be there. Uh, if you are using Android, you will have to switch platform to there but um we are building a pc app so i'm here i don't have to do anything and i'm going to build and run no i'm gonna just build okay so i'm going to make a folder called builds select the folder and this is gonna give me the folder inside this okay so in the builds folder it created like a lot of files if you want to send this exe file you need to send all the folder so the entire folder to your friend all right and if you want to package this into our uh, traditional installation exe file installation file uh, there is another uh, website uh, or not another third party software that allows you to package it uh, but for now, we just run this exe file. So just double click. Yeah, now I can toggle this button. So I didn't make a quit button, so I cannot quit this app. So I have to use Control Alt Delete Task Manager to quit to quit Steam Odyssey. And task. Yeah, we can also add a quick quick button, a turntable slider, and everything that is actually covered in that tutorial that I ask you to watch. So I don't want to repeat myself too much on that. So it's already in this tutorial all right do
Do you have any question? So I hope uh, what's going to be happening in the for in this class during the semester, hopefully it was clear. And I think your interest was also quite clear to me. Yeah. And I hope the assign first assignment is clear and please already start thinking about what kind of things you wanna, you are very keen on producing. Anyways, we want to make something good as we are spending time on it, right? So yeah, and let's try to make something really nice and having good impact on school. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, we can find a good, like common interest for few groups and create really nice outcome. Cool. Any question? Cool. Then I hope you can really like watch those tutorials. Oh, one more tutorial if you are interested in. Let me share that. So, so it's here. So let me put this here as well. So optional. So these are uh, How do I remove the spacing? Never mind. Oh, become too small. Okay. Anyways, uh, you can tell, right? This is first tutorial, second, third, and fourth. So these tutorials are eventually something we will cover in this class. So if you can go ahead, already watch some, you will be, you will be more ahead of time. So for example, what you can do, what we can do here, Let's see if I have covered. I think I was saying the same thing. Yeah. So uh, you see that uh, we were, so all of the AR AIs that if we don't use MRTK, MRTK is mixed reality toolkit. Uh, it's developed for HoloLens or in by Microsoft. And uh, if we install that, you can experience three-dimensional UI, if that makes sense. So the UI I just covered today is screen-based. It's hooked to the screen, right? But if you have a UI that is hovering in certain uh, three-dimensional position, it's much more interesting, right? So if you are very interested in exploring that ahead, you can go ahead and do that. So that is about covering the MRTK plugin. So those plugin allows you to make three-dimensional button. So these are like three-dimensional button. Can you imagine? Like it's uh, it's not connected to your screen. So the, there is two different types, screen-based UIs and uh, real geo-position located UIs. They are different. But 
but all of them are going to be useful. But for HoloLens, we need these three dimensional buttons. All right. I hope everybody is excited to the semester ahead. Yeah. And looking forward to work with you guys. Hi. Hi. The first tutorial is building app in Android. If we are using iPhone, should we watch another tutorial? Yeah, so just uh, record some evidence that you, uh -huh. uh, that you follow the tutorial. Yeah, and maybe mm -hmm. just before you build it. Yeah, or you can actually build an app. Uh, so, yeah, let me, let me actually, give me one second. Okay. So if you build, yeah, and you go to Android and switch platform, you can actually build the Android app for exactly the same thing what I just built for PC. Um, yeah, if you watch the tutorial, you see you will see like what kind of uh, options you will need to change and stuff yeah but uh you have you will go to player setting and you will have some instruction what to change here but don't worry yeah for now let me just show you if i say build and i can say android builds just want to separate and say save Oh, I have to name it, name an APK file. So uh, toggle house app. So one good thing about this, about uh, Android app is really easy to build with you in Windows. And once it's built, gives you an APK file. Takes some time. Slower than I expected. Okay, it's fine. Uh, but while I'm waiting, I'm going to go to our shared Google Drive. And you can uh, make your own folder. Like I'm gonna name myself. And I'm gonna check. Okay. Once can we not is... use the uh, iOS build option on the, on the build setting? In Windows, no. Okay. Well, you can you can set all the options and stuff, but it doesn't build. Yeah. So is it able for us to use like an Android emulator on PC to run the Android app? Um, it's possible. Yeah, but I had a lot of like firewall issue and stuff. Yeah, um, but if you okay. if you try that, yeah, you can you can use that emulator if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great option. Oh yeah, that's actually a good idea. So okay, so now I have a, have have an APK app, and I'm pretty sure it's one error. It's gonna work. Then feel free to ask. Uh, yeah, ask me or I'm, I cannot guarantee that I can test it for you every time, <clears throat> but send it to a friend. So just put it in your folder or email it to a friend. And for now, I'm going to download this from my phone and I'm gonna uh, log into my Google Drive and just double click on it. So it's gonna uh, uh, install on my app, on my phone. 
so you don't have to USB debug and it's really simple. Just send it to somebody. So this is a Steam Odyssey folder. So I see this APK file. You can just click on it and install it. And if you have a good friend who can test it for you, uh, ask them to install it and save some screenshots for you. That can also work. It's much easier than uh, installing an Apple app. So I can just say install. So it says blocked by play safety for safety. I just say install anyways. Okay. I hope it works. So don't send. So now it's working. So I can toggle. I can toggle. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Cool, good question. Any other question? Otherwise, I think we can wrap up today and yeah, we will see every every week, nine o'clock at this very Zoom link. Yeah, until we have a good plan for making, I think uh, very likely until midterm is going to be online. Yeah, and uh, by midterm, we should have a very clear plan how we are going to make and use the rest of the semester. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you, everybody. Yeah. See you next week then. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.